Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. Today's session, Working with White Text and Lines with Steve Spence. Brought to you by Conde Systems. One of the restrictions with sublimation is that we cannot sublimate white. The way we get white text or other objects in our sublimated products is we start with a white substrate and we just let the white background show through our design and that gives us white. Of course if we're working with other color materials like gold or silver or even some of the specialty materials when we create what appears to be white text or objects on the screen they are going to show up as either gold or silver, or if you can find colored sublimatable material, show up as whatever color that substrate is. So, let's look at white text a moment. Because there is a significant problem when we use white text. On the screen, what you see looks pretty good. The problem is, when you sublimate it, it won't look that way. What it will do is it will look more like this. Much of the white will disappear. And that creates a problem, especially as you get to small text. When working with black text over a colored background, even a white background, you can probably sublimate down to about six point type. If you're really careful and your material is really good that you start with, you might even be able to get four point and still have it legible. But when you're working with white on a colored background, that won't happen. And there's a specific reason why white becomes the problem. And that is a word called migration. Migration is where the outside toners push in on the vacant space. Because we don't have white sublimation ink, that just leaves a hole. But where the black background is, or whatever color it might be, there is toner there. And it has a tendency to migrate inward. It's one of those situations where there is no effort pushing it back, so it's very easy to move in. This doesn't happen if we're working with, say, black text on a colored background, because we have an equal amount of force pushing in and pushing out at the same time. So it's balanced. But when working with white... We don't have that. The same thing is true with lines. If we sublimate a half-point line, what we actually will get is probably nothing at all. If we sublimate a one-point line, we'll be lucky to get a half-point. A two-point, we might get one point. Now, these are just simulations, so it will vary with your experience, and it will certainly vary with the quality of material you're using, what color background you're using, and it will also depend on how careful you are about keeping the heat on your heat press accurate, how long you keep it in the press, and how much pressure you use during the process. This problem will occur with any color, not just black. But black is very, very strong, and it has the biggest issues. Well, let's look at a couple of texts real quick, and let me give you a tip. In the upper left, we see the most overused font the world has ever known brushed script. Regardless of how much it's overused, we still use it a lot. And it's fairly bold, so one would think 
that it will sublimate pretty well. But here's the problem. The space between the H and the I, that little area right there, is going to drop out as sure as the world. If we move over to a font like this one, guess what? There's that little fine line on the H. Guess what's going to happen when you sublimate it? Or that little line on the E, or that little serif at the end of the T. Those are going to disappear as sure as the world. Here's a font that uses a white shadow type line, and it looks pretty bold. But when it's sublimated, it most likely will look like the first two letters that I have modified just to illustrate my point in this line of text. You can see it looks nothing like what is above. And frankly, you'll be lucky to get even this much out of that piece of text. Here's another. This is a handwriting kind of font, and it looks like it's pretty bold. And if it's used big enough, it'd probably be okay. But if it's used 12 point, 16 point, maybe even 20 point, you're going to find that the black encroaches in on top of the white to the point that it just doesn't look good at all. In the case of Times Roman, the fonts are pretty much bold enough, but these serifs will go away. Here's another one. This uses that two-line concept again. Those serifs are going to disappear as sure as the world, and so will this line coming right up here. Every one of those is going to fade out to almost nothing. Again, we look at a script, and this happens particularly with scripts because they have wide and narrow lines combined, and those narrow lines are going to disappear. Here's a font that's bold. What's going to disappear on that? The bottom of the E, the bottom of the T, the crossbar on the X, those will all fade away. And you'll look at it and think, I had a bold font in there. Where did it go? Why didn't that work? Well, here's the trick. When you're working with a white font, just do this one extra thing. Select the font, then go over to your color bar and do a right click on white. Just that little bit of outline can be enough to make the difference between a font that works and one that doesn't. Let's look at this one a little closer because this one will mislead you. You think, well, that's too thin a black line. It's going to disappear. No, the black line is going to push out into the vacancy of the white area, and it's going to make it bolder than what it is here. It will actually encroach into the white and will probably be just about right. Same thing with Roman. If we select the Roman text, we go over, do a right click. It bolds it up a little bit. Not much, but usually that will be enough to compensate for the migration. Migration is going to be more visible on small text than it is large text. The larger the text, the less you're going to notice it. It's still going to be there, but you won't notice it as much. Let's say, for instance, we're going to work with this font right here. It's got a lot of fine lines in it. And if we add the outline on it, oops, wrong one. If we add the outline on it, you can barely see the difference. So if we're going to use this one and we're afraid that maybe it's a little too fine a detail, we'll go over to our pen tool and we'll beef up the outline a little bit. Instead of it being a hairline or a half a point, let's make it three quarters of a point. 
or if it'll stand it, we can even make it one point. Now, if I were trying to print this as, say, a 6, 8, 10, 12-point text, that's probably the way I would send it to my printer. The black line almost disappears, but when we sublimate it, you'll be surprised about how strong that, that black line becomes. So, the trick is add an outline to white text. It'll make all the difference in the world. What do we do about lines, though? You can't add a line to a line, and so when we look at these, we're going to notice that the 0.5 line disappears. Now, again, this is a simulation. It's not real, so results will vary from all kinds of reasons, but it'll just about disappear. A one point will become about half of what it is on your screen, if you're lucky. So what we do here is when we want to use a particular point size, say, for instance, you want to use a one-point line, put in a two. If you want four, put in a six. Allow a little bit for it to disappear. Now, if you really have to be precise with it, then you're going to have to run a test. Put in a 6, put in an 8, put in a 7, whatever you need to do in order for the result to come out the width you want it to be. But in most cases, it's not necessary for it to be a precise size. It's only necessary that it shows up well. You don't want it all faded out. So that's the story with working with white it can be quite a challenge. And remember, it doesn't have to be occurring on a black background. This will occur on any color background. Light blue, dark blue, pink, green, doesn't matter. But it will show up as a problem on darker colors before it will lighter colors. But it's still there. And you should compensate for it before you waste the product. Hope this helps.